Here's an example of a search algorithm. If you want to search for the value 8 in the list, our program should return the index 4. In this searching algorithm, we start by comparing the value 8 with the first item in the list, which is in index 0. Since 5 is not equal to 8, we proceed to the next item. Since 7 is still not equal to 8, we proceed to comparing it with the next item. Since 3 is not equal to 8, we proceed to the next. 1 is not equal to 8, so we proceed to the next item. In the next iteration, we found the value 8 in the list. The index of 8, which is 4, is returned. This searching algorithm is called linear search. In this algorithm, the list is traversed sequentially, starting with the first element, until the value is found or until all elements have been exhausted. Here's a function implemented in Python that performs linear search. It accepts the list and the value to be searched in the list. Then it returns the index of the value if it is found. Otherwise, it returns none. Let us run this function using the Python interpreter. So here's our linear search function. We have the list L containing 96 items, and we have another list, find list, which contains the items that we will search in the list L. This is our linear search function. If the current item is equal to the value we are looking for, then we return the index where that item is found. Let us run our program. So we have values 170, which is found in index 15, 999 is not found in the list, 300 is not found in the list, 221 is an index 21, and so on. It is important that we know the efficiency of a searching algorithm in terms of the number of iterations it would take for it to find a value in the best, average, and worst cases, especially when we are dealing with large amount of data. The linear search algorithm is very simple to implement, and if we are lucky, the value can be found quickly in the list. This situation happens when the index of the value is close to zero. The best case is when the value is the first item in the list or it is at index zero. In the worst case, we will be traversing the entire list in order to find the value. It will take n steps, where n is the size of the list, to find the value. Here, 9 is the last item in the list and it takes 8 steps to find 9. The worst case happens when the value is found at the last index or the value is not in the list. When is it best to use linear search? One is when the relationship of the values in the list is unknown. And second is when the order of the elements is unknown or the elements is arranged in random order. Now what if we know the order of the elements in the list? For example, we know that the list is sorted in ascending order. We can modify our linear search algorithm and take advantage of the fact that the list is sorted. We add a condition saying that if the value in the current index is already greater than the value being searched, we will stop searching and we will return none since we are sure that we will no longer find the value in the list. The number of iterations for the regular linear search algorithm and the modified one will be the same when the value exists in the list. The improvement can be seen when the item is not in the list and it is less than the value of the last item in the list. In this example, we are trying to find 2 in the list. We will stop searching just during the second iterations since 3 is already greater than 2. But for example, if we are looking for the value 78, the algorithm will take n steps where n is the size of the list, in finding 78 since it is greater than the last item, which is 41. 